is that nice? I think we've got a fan. Hi guys! So this is the long-awaited tutorial for how to make a guinea pig cuddle cup. And I say guinea pigs, but I have had these beds used by a variety of pets, including cats, rabbits, uh, rats, African pygmy hedgehogs, tortoises are a popular one, and also bearded dragons, who apparently love to snuggle. <laughs> But we are mostly about the guinea pigs here and if you didn't know, cuddle cups are like the standard bed that you'll see, a standard small cosy bed. And they are a great starting point for anyone looking to get cosy items or start making cosy items for your own guinea pigs. And I'm so excited to say that this video goes with the release of the pattern for the standard and large size cuddle cups which you can find on my Etsy shop. It's the first sewing pattern I've released for guinea pigs so I'm just just really excited to finally get it out there. And this video does follow the same terminology and steps as the instruction pack that comes with the printable pattern. So if you have the pattern, then hopefully this video will help sort of iron out any questions you have along the way. But whether you have the pattern or not, this video will still help with learning the basics for how these types of beds are made. So first of all, I'm just gonna run through the equipment that you'll need to make the bed. And firstly, I do recommend having a sewing machine as it will just speed up the process. However, the beds can be hand sewn and provided you're prepared to put in the extra time it takes, there's no reason why your hand sewn bed can't be as good as one that's been done on the machine. And then the other equipment you'll need is pretty basic sewing supplies. So I'm gonna cut out some things with a rotary cutter, but you definitely don't need one of them. As long as you have a pair of sharp scissors that are good for cutting through fabric. You'll need some pins, some threads ideally to match your fabrics and then you will also need a needle because there is some hand sewing involved for the last step in the process. Okay, moving on to choosing the fabrics for your bed and I'm gonna try and speak about them in the same way. So we've got the outer layer, which is the fabric that you'll see on the outside of the bed, usually kind of bright, colorful pattern design. Then we've got the middle layer, which is the one you don't see and it usually gives the bed structure. It's in between the outer and the lining layers. And the third layer is the lining layer, which is the one on the inside of the beds and the one which your guinea pigs will snuggle and sleep against. So going back to the outer layer, this one is where you can have pretty much free range on your choice for this one. If you're a beginner, however, then I would recommend going for a quilting weight, 100% quality cotton. So this is the cotton I'm gonna use for the tutorial and I think you can agree, it's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> you can, however, use fleece or other polyester materials. They might just be a little bit trickier to sew with. Next up, we have the middle layer. So as I said, this is the one that you don't see and it's on the inside of the bed and it gives the bed structure. And you can use foam and maybe some other materials for this. However, I really do recommend using polyester batting or sometimes called polyester wadding. And it comes in various thicknesses from two ounces right the way up to 14 ounces. The 14 ounce one can be like three or four centimeters thick. This is about one and a half half centimeters thick and I think it's maybe four or six ounce. I'd probably go for six ounce maybe if you're starting out because a thinner one will be easier to sew and it will still give you a nice sturdy shape to your bed. I'll be using the six ounce for the bottom of the bed but for the sides I'll be using 14 ounce because my sewing machine is pretty indestructible. It deals with anything so I do like to use the thickest wadding. And last but not least we have the lining material. So I would recommend fleece for this and fleece would be the kind of turn to fabric because it is nice and snuggly. Fleece is also something that wicks away moisture so using the same idea that we do for the cage liners we want the material that your guinea pigs are sitting on to be able to draw away moisture so they're not sitting in their own mess. With all that done we're going to get straight into the step-by-step -step instructions. Step one is to prepare your fabrics if you need to. The good news is that your polyester batting material doesn't need any preparation. It's good to cut out and use straight away. If you're using cotton for your outer layer, then you might want to wash it because cottons usually shrink a little bit on their first wash. If you've got fleece or another polyester material for your lining and maybe also your outer layers, then you might want to wash it if the fleece repels water. 
So with your fabric ready, step two is to print out and assemble your pattern. So the patterns for the beds are over a number of pages. Do make sure that your printer isn't scaling them at all, you want it to be the actual size. Once they're all printed, just cut around the edge and then you can stick the pieces together, line up the pieces, covering over those little boxes that say cover me over to assemble. And I just use sellotape one strip on the front and back of each join. With that all done, we are ready to cut out our fabrics. So when your pattern is all cut out and assembled, hopefully you can see that we have two pieces. This are called the side piece and this circular piece is the base piece. You can sort of already see how the pieces will come together, <laughs> like so, to form the bed. <laughs> And you can see that the this is the top edge of the side piece where the dip is, where your piggies will climb in and out of. And step three is to cut out our fabric. So we will have a total of six pieces, three pieces for the side section. That's one outer, one middle and one liner layer. And the same three for the base layer. So again, that's one outer, one middle and one liner layer. And all you need to do for cutting out your fabrics is simply lay your pattern on top of the fabric fabric, make sure it's not shifting or bunched up underneath anywhere and then just pin around the edge. It can be a little bit tricky especially if you're printed on normal paper but try to take care as you put the pins in and not move the fabric too much underneath the pattern. Once it's all pinned just cut around it with your fabric scissors and we'll catch up once you've got all six pieces cut out. pieces cut out we are ready for step four and some sewing the first bit of sewing is dead easy it is just two short sections to form the back seam of the bed so what we're gonna do is first take our outer side piece and lay it down with the right side facing up remember the right side is the side that we will be able to see on the outside of the finished bed then I'm going to take the left side and fold the whole thing over so it looks like this I'll just have a quick check of the edges to make sure everything's in line but most importantly is this vertical edge Edge here which will form the back seam. This is the part we are going to sew so I'm just pinning along this edge and then sewing one to two centimeters in from the edge on the machine. Just use a standard straight running stitch and don't worry too much about the seam allowances. It's not an exact science, we're not making clothes here. As long as you are fairly consistent with whatever number you choose then the bed will come out fine. After that you want to do the exact same thing with the middle and lining layers. So first lay your polyester wadding or batting out in front of you, it doesn't matter which way around it is, and then lay your lining layer, which in my case is the fleece, on top with the right side facing out. That's if it has a right and a wrong side. Usually fleece has a slightly fluffier side, which is the side you want to be seeing in the finished bed. So I'm going to put that down with the fluffy side facing up towards me. And then just like I did with the outer layer, I'm going to fold both of these together over onto each other. So I have my lining layer sandwiched between my middle layer and then I'm going to pin and sew these layers together along this same vertical back seam. And you might find it a little bit more tricky to get the pins in if you have thick layers of material like me. And on the machine I'm just sewing this seam with roughly the same seam allowance that I used for the outer layer. And once you've done that, that gives us these two side loops that I'm going to call them. And just to say, if you are using thick material, you might find it easier to cut away some of the seam allowance of the polyester wadding. It will just make sewing the next step that little bit easier for me when it comes to going over this thick seam. On to step five and hopefully we've got our two side loops. What we're gonna do in this step is make the seam around the top of the bed. So first taking the loop of our lining and middle fabric, we're going to turn this one inside out. So grab it like that and then just flip it round and turn the whole thing inside out. And straight away we can see the shape of the bed, we just need to make it all neat and get the fabrics in line with each other. So I just want to move this fleece layer up. So now we can see our lining layer 
is facing out and our middle layer is on the inside here. We can see the rough seam edge that we've sewn there and then on the other side, the now outside, we can see the nice neaten side of the seam. Just moved you down ever so slightly to show you better. So we're going to take the middle and lining loop and basically put it inside of the outer fabric loop. And the key thing here is that the outer material, the right side of the outer material is now facing the right side of the lining material. And you can sort of line up the back seams first and then holding onto the top, you can tuck the whole thing over like this. It might be a little bit tricky if you've got super thick fabrics, but it should get there in the end. So I'm just gonna go round and make sure all three fabrics are in line along this top edge. So we should have something like this. And I'm now going to pin all the way around the edge and then I'm going to sew around the edge on the machine too. And sewing around bits like this, especially when you have thick fabrics, isn't always easy. But if you are just starting out on the machine and you're finding it difficult, then I suggest going very slowly and just doing it in short one or two centimeter sections. More so when you get around to doing the curved bits, just take it slowly and carefully. And also keep Keep the pins in place until the last minute. If you start pulling them out too early, then the fabrics are going to shift around. But if you leave them in until the needle is almost going to hit them, then you have much more control and you're able to keep the fabrics together much better. So once you have your side loop all sewn together, this is where the base pieces come in and step six is sewing the middle and lining layer base pieces onto the corresponding layers of the side loop. So first of all, lay your middle layer base piece out in front of you and then lay your lining layer base piece on top of it with the right side facing out towards you. Then put those to one side for a minute whilst on the loop we turn the whole thing inside out and upside down. <laughs> so you've now got got the dip on the bottom and you've got the flat edge on the top. So your layers might also separate a bit at this point which is exactly what, what we want. Just make sure that your outer layer is sort of tucked down away from your lining layer for this step. Back to the base pieces and I like to just put in four pins to help these two layers stay together so that they don't fall apart when we're trying to pin them to the side piece. Then once we've done that, take the base pieces and sort of flip them upside down as if you were going to just stick them onto the bottom of the side loop. This is the seam that we want to create and the seam we're going to pin next. So starting at the vertical seam at the back of the bed, just tuck in the base piece whilst you sort of pull out the side pieces and make the two sections of lining material line up against each other perfectly. And I just pop my very first pin in here, making sure that it pins down the seam allowance at this back of the bed. And then we want to carry on this way all around the bottom of the bed, just lining up the layers and putting those pins in one by one. I find it easier to pin and sew from around the outside of the side loop. And as you go around, just remember to remove those first four pins that we put into the circle piece to help hold those layers together. You might find that the base circle doesn't want to fit at first, but just keep adjusting your pins until there is no spare fabric on either the base or the loop. Moving on to step seven, and this is basically the same as step six, except we are sewing the base of the outer layer to the outer layer side piece. And importantly, we don't sew all the way around. We need to leave a gap so that we can turn everything inside out and see our finished bed. Just take your outer base piece and with the right sides facing each other, start pinning it to the side piece. And again, I find it easier to pin from the outside of the side piece in like this. 
When you are ready to sew, start from around 5 centimeters or 2 inches left of the vertical back seam and go all the way around, but make sure you leave that gap of about 8 to 10 centimeters or 3 to 4 inches. Okay, so at this stage, our bed is really taking shape and it actually looks recognizable as a bed. And this is where we get onto step eight, which is a really simple step, no sewing involved at all. And all we have to do is turn the entire thing inside out through the hole that we left in the previous step. This is really the most exciting step because you get to see almost your finished product at the end of it. So I'm gonna turn mine inside out now and we'll see what it looks like. So once I've shunted everything around to get it all in the right place, as you can see, the bed is looking really cool. And our last step is just a little bit of hand sewing to get this hole stitched up. And if you remember, this is where the sewing needle comes in that I mentioned in the equipment list at the beginning. So first we want to pin the two sides together as if they had been done on the machine. So try and keep an even amount of seam allowance tucked inside the seam and two or three pins should do it. Then to sew it up, we're going to use a slip stitch, which basically involves taking a tiny amount of material from each side at a time, slowly working our way from one end to the other. And I actually go back on myself to the beginning again and then secure the thread at the start and the finish with a small knot or some stitching in one place. It might take a bit of time, but once it's done, it's really hard to see where the hole even was. And it's nice and neat and nice and secure as well. And with that done, the bed is finished. And if it doesn't look perfect, don't worry about it. The great thing about having a pattern is that you can make as many beds as you like, and you will definitely improve the more you make. So now you can pop the bed straight in the biggie's cage and see what they think. Or if you think it needs that something extra, then an optional step is to add a little bit of top stitching around this top seam, which you can do quite easily on the sewing machine. It can just help give it that finished look, but it is totally up to you. Hopefully I've gone into enough detail to help you create your own cuddle cups. And if you do choose to buy the pattern from the shop link below, then it does of course come with its own set of written instructions. The last thing I want is for anyone to get stuck using it, but if you do get confused at any stage, then please don't hesitate to pop me a message on Etsy or let me know in the comments below. Hello! Would you like something? Would you like something new? Pedro definitely doesn't look very bothered. Wow! What's that Roxy? What's that? What do you think of that? What's that then? He's going for it! You fit. I think you fit, don't you? Yep. Pedro pooped in it already. So I do just wash my cosy items on a normal wash at 30 or 40 degrees. And then rather than putting them in the tumble dryer, I just either leave them out to air dry outside or on the radiators. So that is everything for this video. Best of luck with making your own cuddle cups. And if you liked this kind of tutorial video and you want to see more patterns in the future, then please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to my subscribers. As always, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!